Hello, welcome to Regime Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 25 of SQL Server. In this session, we'll learn about date-time data types, date-time functions, and understand the terms UTC time and time zone offset. In SQL Server, there are several data types as far as date-time is concerned. Time, date, small date time, etc. Now, depending on the requirement of the application, we choose the appropriate date time data type. For example, if I want to store only the date of birth of a person, then it's enough if I choose the date data type. On the other hand, instead of choosing date data type, if you choose date time, you know, let's say I want to store only the date of birth, I don't want to capture the time, but instead of choosing date data type, type I've chosen data type date time data type what is the disadvantage of doing so if you look at date time data type it has got eight bytes the size but whereas date data type is only three bytes so when it's not required to capture the time then probably it's you know it makes sense to choose the date data type alone rather than choosing date time data type so on the other hand, let's say I want to store the time as well. Maybe that's when we choose the date time data type. Okay, maybe I want to store only the time. In those cases, maybe I'll choose the time data type. Okay, or if I want more precision for the nanoseconds, then I choose date time to data type. So here, year, month, date, hours, milliseconds, I mean minutes, seconds, and nanoseconds. So there is more precision for nanoseconds here in date time too when we compare that with date, date time. Okay, now we have this date time offset. Let us understand what we mean by date time offset. Now if you look at the date time offset, it's pretty much similar to date time too. Okay, we have years, month, days, and then hours, minutes, seconds, nanoseconds. And then you have got some plus, you know, optionally plus or minus symbol. And then you've got hours and minutes. Okay, so this piece here, the plus or minus hours and minutes, this is called the time zone offset. And this time, you know, when you use date time offset, data type, this time is usually, you know, in UTC time. Okay, this falls in UTC time zone. Now let us understand what exactly do we mean by UTC time and uh, you know the time zone offset. Okay, so UTC basically stands for Coordinated Universal Time. Now here is another confusion. UTC, but if you look at Coordinated Universal Time, it is CUT. So how is this an expanded form of this abbreviation? Now there are some political reasons behind why they have actually abbreviated it like this, but actually this stands for Coordinated Universal Time. Now we'll understand the concepts behind what do we mean by Coordinated Universal Time and uh, the time zone offset rather than worrying about the political reasons behind uh, abbreviating it like that. So UTC stands for Coordinated Universal Time. So basically this UTC is is the you know is the central time based on which the world regulates clocks and time okay now UTC and there is another time zone called GMT green which mean time okay they're actually synonymous with each other for all common purposes but however there are very slight differences you know uh, but most of the time GMT and UTC are, are synonymous for all common purposes okay so what do we mean by this UTC okay to understand this practically, you know, all of us have worked with the clock in Windows operating system. So if I open the clock in Windows operating system, let's say I want to change the date and time settings, I click that. And when we go to change time zone, so if you look at this time zone here, and if I drop this list down, you look at this, these are all the time zones, if not all, most of the time zones in the world. Okay, now if you look at this, there is something called UTC here, which is nothing but coordinated universal time. Okay, and then if you look some of these here, so UTC plus two hours, UTC plus three hours. Okay, so 
this UTC is the coordinated universal time, the central, I can say, the world standard time based on which other clocks and times in different time zones are calculated. Okay, so if in UTC the time is 12 o'clock at the minute, then if we want to calculate what is the time in Germany, which is Berlin, so t if it is 12 o'clock in UTC, coordinated universal time, in Germany it's 12 hours, I mean 12 in the noon plus 1, which means 13 hours, 1 o'clock in the afternoon in Germany. Okay, on the other hand, if we want to find out what's the time in New Delhi, so New Delhi is around five and a half hours from UTC, which is India, so the time in, I mean, in UTC time zone, if it's 12 o'clock, uh, then it's 5.30 in the evening in India. Okay, so all the other time zones are based on UTC. So, so that plus or minus hour, so if you have to look at the countries on the negative side, I mean on the minus side, UTC minus something, look at this, um, Central Central America is UTC minus six hours. So this minus plus or minus thing is nothing but the offset from the um, UTC time zone. Okay, now I'm right now in London. So if you look at the time right now in London, it is 22.18. Now let me try to switch my time zone to UTC and see what happens. So when I select UTC, coordinated universal time, look at this, uh, current date and time on my machine is 22.18, which is 10 o'clock in the night. Okay, but UTC time is 21.19, which means London's time is actually one hour ahead of the UTC time, okay? But if you look at the London time zone here, we don't have that plus one hour extra here, okay? It just says, okay, UTC coordinated universal time and then UTC uh, Dublin, Edinburgh, Lisbon, London, okay? But then if you look at the time that I have selected, there is one hour difference, okay? There was one hour difference because so if I select London, let's cancel that. Let's go back, change date and time, change time zone. Look at this, it's 22.19. Now if I select UTC time, so there is one hour difference between UTC and London, but then it doesn't show up in that drop down list. So why is that? That's because there is another concept called daylight savings. Okay, so since this is summer here, here, um, we actually have moved our clocks, you know, one hour, you know, one hour forward, because of which we are getting that difference between, uh, I mean, the UTC time and the time in London. Otherwise, you know, in winter, again, we'll move it backwards and UTC time matches with London's time. So that's why daylight savings are not taken into consideration here. That's the reason why you see uh, that difference when I change the data date here. Okay, so I, I hope it's clear what is UTC time and time zone. Okay, all right, so in order to understand these different data types. I've created a very simple table here um, called TBL date time and I have used all the date time data types that are available you know time, date, small date time, date time etc in this table just to show you practically how the data gets stored in the table. So if you look at this we have this column C time which is time data type C date is just date data type small date time is small date time. I have include C underscore just to, you know, give it a, you know, C underscore indicates column in that table. It's about that. So when I select the all the rows from this table, we don't have any data in those columns. Okay, let's try and insert some data into these columns. Okay, now look at this. In order to get a system date and time, the current date and time in SQL Server, I can use a function called get date. We have spoken about string, many string functions. For example, substring, lower, upper. Just like all these functions, 
to work with datetime data types we have datetime functions and one of the very common functions that we use is get date which will basically give us the current system date and time so when I execute that I get the current system date and time now I'm using this function instead of typing in the values for time date small date time you know for all these columns I am actually using this method okay so it's gonna return if you look at this select get date it's going to return the current system date and time okay year month days hour minutes seconds and milliseconds I mean nanoseconds rather okay so now when I try to execute this query so one row affected which means one row got inserted into this table called TBL date time so if I select this look at this time is only storing the time hours minutes seconds and the nanoseconds so which is nothing but our time data type hours minutes seconds and nanoseconds and along the same lines if you look at day time offset so it's storing year month days hours minutes seconds nanoseconds and the time zone offset now since get date if you see the time zone offset difference it's only zero zero here that's because when I say get date it doesn't give any value for time zone offset so that's why you see the time zone offset difference is plus zero zero on the other hand if you want to update that you can update with any time zone offset but if you want to store the time zone offset in date time to data type or date time data type it's not practically possible it doesn't allow you to do that okay so let's quickly update it with some offset so I want to say the offset is maybe plus one hour for this time I've just written the update query beforehand you know in order to save time in typing so when I press F5 you should see we got an offset there you know it's 10 hours okay all right cool okay so these are some of the functions that we can use in SQL Server to get the current system date and time in SQL Server you know we have just seen how to use get date function to return the current system date and time okay on my computer I have SQL Server installed so on the computer where you have SQL Server installed if you want to get the time and date from that machine then you can use select get date okay let's say if I'm connected to SQL Server using a SQL Server management studio from a different computer and when I connect to that SQL Server from SQL Server management studio installed on that client computer and when I execute select get date I get the date and time of the SQL of where you have the SQL Server installed rather than on your computer from which you have connected to SQL Server okay so apart from get date you can also use various other functions like current timestamp system date time system date time offset get UTC date and sys UTC date time so if you look at these functions they return the current date and time in different formats okay so for example we have just spoken about what is UTC time and the time zone offset so if you want you know maybe um, the time zone offset as well you can use system sys date time offset that will give you the time in UTC I mean date time in UTC and then the offset the difference okay so if you look at sys date sys date time offset so I've got the time in UTC and one hour is the difference now right now in London the time is 2226 okay which is one hour ahead of the UTC time okay so along the same lines you have these other functions so depending on it on your requirement how you want to retrieve the date and time you choose that function so and out of these functions get date is very commonly used if you look at current timestamp and get date, they're written exactly the same date and time format. The only difference between them is current timestamp is an ANSI SQL equivalent to get date. Okay, whereas sys date time gives us more fractional seconds precision. 
okay since date time offset which we have just seen you know you have more fractional seconds precision plus the time zone offset and if you want the UTC date and time you use get UTC date time and along the same lines sys UTC date time okay which has more fractional seconds precision uh, along with UTC date time on this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET and C-Sharp interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.